G'day folks, Andy here from McDowell Manor. So I added to the quails, we've got three females and one male now. Uh, they're producing on average pretty much three eggs a day actually, um, which I've been eating rather than incubating because the incubator is already running from last time so I'll have to wait till they're finished so at three a day if you can store them for five days that'll mean I'm incubating probably 15 eggs next time which is pretty good going I reckon okay part two of the great quail hatching experiment we are on day 14 which means I now need to turn off the egg rotator and I need to increase the humidity. I'm just having a look at my little little bookie boo bar to 70%. Um, it says I can candle them today, so I must be able to open this up a bit to disconnect the little egg rotators, which is good. We'll do that in them right now. Don't know that I'll be able to show you this because I want to do it relatively quick, so we'll see what happens, eh? Okay, so you can see I've disconnected the rotator there, that's the other side over here. I've filled it right up with water underneath down there. I had a crack at candling them. Um, let me tell you, I don't know whether it was my candler. I have read that it's particularly difficult to do with quail eggs and in the end I gave up. There's the odd egg I have to turn back up. Oh no, that is the right way, pointy end down. So there's probably the odd egg. I'd want to check, make sure it's still pointy egg down. Um, but so we're on to the two days where if any of these are fertile and good to go, they'll hatch. We'll see, eh? All right, wish me luck. So we're late on day 17. And folks, we have quails. There's one falling down the back, the poor little bugger. I'll rescue him in a second. But I just wanted you to see they are hatching. Hey, I bloody did it. I bloody did it. Who would have thunk? Stupid me! Can you see that? That's one just come out the egg that's right beside him there. I was hoping I'd catch that one, but not to worry, I'll try and catch the next one. In the middle is the one that just came out. You can see he's still got some egg sack attached to his little <coughs> leg, I think. Oh, that's Bobby and Benny playing around. He's still very wet, he's very new. Wow, that's amazing. So my Rosie said, I was so childishly excited and proud about the birth of my quails. <laughs> she reckoned, oh, I thought you'd sat on the eggs yourself for two weeks the way you carried on. So there's the five of them. Ended up with five. Um, so three eggs didn't hatch. I guess they were just not viable. Um, but I'm really happy that I got the five I got. Um, I've started collecting more eggs now so I can do another run before it gets too cold um, and Bob's your uncle that what I've done is I just set a light there a big lamp that we have and uh, that provides the heat for the little fellas I actually moved it back a bit so I could film um, yeah, that provides heat. You've got to be careful at the start when you put the water in for the first couple of days, apparently, because they're so stupid the poor little buggers fall in and drown. <laughs> I suppose I wouldn't be laughing if I came out and found a drowned quail, I can tell you right now. Uh, but yeah, so that's the dreams of having hatching quail experiment that appears to have worked. And we're about to go into a bit of quail production. These guys will be kept separate from the uh, existing ones, the, the large ones. Um, and that's because we don't want any father-daughter inbreeding. Um, so I'm actually going to go to a different place to get another little male um, who I'll put in with this lot. So any males that are in this lot um, will be sold at the local produce shop or swapped for a bit of um, chicken food or quail food. Um, and that'll keep me with manageable numbers. Alrighty, folks, you have a good one. <laughs>